Hey guys, what's up? Gookill here doing a uh, quick video here. Uh, well, I hope for it to be quick. I hope that I don't spend too much time talking about something that doesn't really need a lot of words anymore. Uh, we're a few days removed from the Royal Rumble pay-per-view that happened on Sunday. It's January 27th right now, so it's a few days ago. And I'm also going to talk a little bit about the Monday Night Raw that happened afterwards. There's not really a lot to say. So that being said... Uh, let's just get right to it. I'm going to break down, uh, the matches that happened quickly. I'm not really going to get too much into moves and things like that. Just going to talk about what actually happened and yeah, let's just go from there. Okay. So we open the night off with new age outlaws in a tag team match against the Ascension. So last Royal Rumble, we had the new age outlaws winning the WWE tag team championships. Um, in my opinion, that move to put the belts on them pretty much put the tag division in a tailspin until the Usos were able to capture the titles. And actually, they've done incredibly well this past year. They're very fun, very entertaining. So it was interesting to see the Outlaws again back. And after the segment that happened on the Monday Night Raw before this with all the legends and the Ascension actually getting kind of their... Not kind of. They were essentially steamrolled right over by the three different teams. Uh, it was kind of interesting to see uh, how this match might play out because the New Age Outlaws are obviously still a very popular team and the crowd showed that. Um, the only complaint that I had about this match, aside from the fact that I think that the Ascension is really... I don't think they were a great team in NXT. I don't think they had a, a good gimmick and I think their gimmick in WWE is actually much worse, but... The one thing that actually bugged me about this match is that we're looking... The New Age Outlaws, with all due respect to them, they're a great team. And they have the resume and everything that goes on with that. But at the end of the day, they're 40-plus years old. I, I, I don't know for sure if they're even 50-plus. I mean, Billy Gunn looks like he's in great shape still. But that being said, you've got a couple of 40-year-old guys that are getting a prolonged period of offense against a team that is supposed to be squashing people left and right. So, I mean, not even looking at it from a smart point of view, how am I supposed to believe as a viewer that the Ascension has any real chance even against the Usos? I mean, just the logic isn't there. The storytelling's not there. The Ascension, you suck. And I hope that you guys get repackaged or something like that because I think that you're going nowhere fast. Okay, we'll move on to our uh, next bout of the evening. So the Usos versus uh, the Miz and Mizdow for the Tag Team Championships. Um, right off the bat, how many times have we seen these guys face off on the last month of WWE programming? Uh, we didn't really get anything special here. If One thing I noticed is that um, the camera work and the overall flow of the match seemed to spend a lot of time on Mizdow. So at least they recognize that Mizdow is getting over. At least they recognize that um, there's there's something there. But I felt that all that emphasis that was put into what Mizdow was doing really took away from the match. It really didn't feel competitive because we were just watching impersonation after impersonation uh the usos retained about 10 minutes um not much else to say here we didn't really get anything new we didn't get a five-star classic match i mean we know the usos are capable of more we know that miz and mizdow are capable of more um this was hopefully supposed to be setting up what was mizdow turning later on in the evening and well we'll talk about that in a little bit next match the Bellas versus Paige and Natalia. I don't know what it is about them not wanting to give Paige a lot of time in the ring. But again, the trend continues. Paige never got the hot tag. Uh, never got in any real offense. Just was briefly in the ring. Uh, I'm personally not a fan of the Bellas act. Especially with that huge logic gap of... What, where, why is Brie Bella on Nikki's page again? You know, like there was that was never explained, especially after the horrid, um, you know, I wish you were dead in the womb or whatever the dumb comment was that, uh, Nikki made towards Brie. And then just it was one week on Raw, or sorry, it was a pay per view actually. 
um they're just together and there's just never been explained so i mean i can't invest in that because it just doesn't make any sense to me um but a match ending on a forearm shot in unless we're talking about lex luger here that's that's weak even by diva standards and again just night and day difference between what they're doing with the women in nxt and developmental and what they do with them on the main roster this is pretty much here to fill time and um be a stopgap between you know i guess the crowd being hot for mizdow and then putting us right into the uh wwe world heavyweight championship match which we'll get to right now brock lesnar john cena seth rollins triple threat for the uh wwe world heavyweight championship uh, when seth rollins was added to the match i kind of wondered what it was going to mean for the whole story involving that because it opened up a lot of options right i mean with the rumors going around about um roman reigns and him possibly winning the royal rumble you know you've got potential for a shield members match i mean uh you got the whole ufc rumors circulating around brock lesnar if he's leaving soon are they going to want to get the belt off of him or maybe they've just put rollins into this match because they don't want to have uh cena take another loss to brock um or maybe because i mean i don't know what else you could do with brock and cena to be honest i mean uh SummerSlam night of champions i i you know these guys are great characters great athletes but neither are really known for being great in-ring technicians and i'm pretty sure that a, a singles match between brock and cena for the third time probably wouldn't have come anywhere close to what we got here this match was fantastic i can't say enough good things about the storytelling the drama um i mean i completely bought in to the table spot i mean i was convinced brock was done and this was not a show or anything going on like that i love how they made brock look like a monster i love how they made rollins look like a, you know pesty heel that was gonna stay in it and just throw everything at the kitchen sink to get the job done and even cena brought out some new moves and you know as much as i'm sick of that stale cena character he uh he really stepped up as he usually does step up in matches like this i mean we've seen what he can do when he's got you know a lot of time to work a match and you know he's a great storyteller in the ring uh this for me i've seen a lot of triple threats and this is number two on my list you know between uh sorry before the wrestlemania 20 main event which i still think is the greatest triple threat match of all time this was right up there i was absolutely sucked in for the entire duration of it um wow phoenix splash holy shit and then you know brock coming out of nowhere and you know finishing off the match and getting the the clean three on rollins um which i guess you know can potentially set yourself up for cena lesnar in the future as sure nobody really wants to see that right now but the uh the option is there um the one complaint i could make about this match is i mean we watched lesnar kick out at one of an AA. We watched him kick out of three AAs. We watched him take an elbow through a table, you know, thrown into the steps. Um, at the end of the match there, what, he had uh, two two briefcase shots and then still got up and hit the F5. So, I mean, from that perspective, right, I mean, I get that this is pro wrestling and it's all fake anyway. I completely sympathize with that. But from that perspective... I mean, what the hell is it going to take to beat Brock? And I think that WWE has a very, very uphill climb in storytelling to be able to convince people that, you know, whoever is the chosen one. So, for example, we're going to talk about the Royal Rumble winner and what that means. But, you know, is how do you justify, oh, this move was better than, you know, three AAs or a breaking through the table right i mean you've built brock up to be what he is now and i think that that is the one challenge that's really gonna throw things for a loop within the wwe so we'll move on from that i think the right guy went over i should say that i definitely have a fan of brock and i think that he's a mainstay attraction um 
And I think that as long as WWE has them, they should use them because um, even, you know, you, you don't put that win over from Taker at Mania and then just job them out just because his contract's expiring. You realize that this is kind of bigger than contracts and money and that this is some real storytelling that is going on within your company is the best story angle you've had in years, possibly, right? So uh, we'll move on here to the 30-man Royal Rumble match and the debacle that it was. Um, so Roman Reigns wins the Royal Rumble. I am not as big of a fan of that, but it's not because I don't like Roman Reigns. It's because I don't like how the match played out. I don't think it did him any favors. I don't think anybody looked good coming out of this match. And even going into the match, I didn't feel that Roman was ever being made out to, you know, he never appeared on television that he was even, you know, the next one or the guy. I mean, all credit due to Bray Wyatt, who was the only one who was really making a huge push about the Royal Rumble, and he had a nice showing, but... I mean, it just, you know, you bring out, you know, Bubba Ray as, you know, first time in 10 years and the crowd goes nuts for that. And he's kind of, you know, eliminated ho-hum and not really a big deal made out of that. Uh, didn't really understand the Zack Ryder answering Bray Wyatt's challenge. It felt kind of weird, but he got a nice pop. But again, what do you, what do we got going on for Zack Ryder? And then Daniel Bryan, pop of the night. That was a superstar pop if I've ever heard one. I mean, it sent shivers down my spine because it his music hit that first little uh, classical note and the crowd popped like it was stone cold. I mean, if you need any question about who is your most popular superstar in the company, it's him. I mean, bottom line, Daniel Bryan. Um, I thought that he was eliminated pretty, you know... I, I can understand the thought process of wanting to eliminate Brian before Roman got into the ring, thinking that, you know, the crowd would get, you know, over the elimination and they would invest themselves back in. Um, it didn't happen, but I can understand that. But I still think that, you know, you have them last longer and you have the fans continue to be invested in it. And this is where things really went weird and south for me, because the people that came in afterwards were these people that have no chance, no hope. I mean, DDP, thanks for coming out, but we know you're not winning, right? There's no believability in that. It's a nostalgia act. You know, we've got Tyson Kidd, Fandango, uh, you know, Goldust, uh, just these guys that just the crowd is sitting on their hands. I'm sitting on my hands at home going, okay, none of these guys are winning, right? So... Um, very, very low investment. We talk about late in the match, you know, you actually get in, um, you know, Roman at 19 and he gets booed and everything else. Um, but you know, uh, you got Dolph Ziggler coming in at 30, you know, that would have been a guy you could have put in there earlier and had, you know, the crowd be popping a bit for him. Uh, you know, Dean Ambrose, again, another very popular guy, um, comes out later on doesn't really get much of anything and then the worst part of it is Kane and Big Show you know I get this authority angle and I get you know that they spent a lot of time pushing them as monsters and everything else but having them toss fan favorites and toss characters that people are really invested into I mean I love what Kane and Big Show have done for, you know, WWE, but I mean, it was pretty night and day. They were not winning the Royal Rumble and the Royal Rumble. I mean, I think even like things changed with the final couple people in, you know, the Royal Rumble, you know, in that 2000 to 2010, right? I mean, we're talking, you had a time period where you had Rock and Stone Cold. Um, you had Triple H and Kurt Angle. You had, um, well, I guess we can't talk about 2004, right? But you have Batista, John Cena. We had what was the best ending sequence in Royal Rumble history, Shawn Michaels and The Undertaker. Ten minutes of just drama and story laid out. And you you just you didn't get anything out of this. It was, it was nothing. It was just the crowd 
sitting there waiting for Roman to win because that's what was going to happen. Um, that is my biggest problem with the Royal Rumble match. It was just, it was whatever, whoever booked it, it was booked poorly. I get, you know, protect Roman and make, you know, let's put him in the best spot possible. But I mean, I'm thinking if you even had a final four that consisted of, you know, Ambrose, Ziggler, um, Wyatt, and Roman, at least you have four people that, you know, the crowd's going to buy into a little bit more uh, about them winning. You get a better finish. And I mean, cool to see The Rock at the end, but I mean, it, it all speaks for itself. The crowd hated the match, hated the finish. Uh, nothing was saving that segment. Um, so overall, what I think of the pay-per-view, a bunch of filler tag matches that kind of mean nothing, have no real impact on anything that's going to happen. WWE Championship match, phenomenal. Royal Rumble, one of the worst I've ever seen. So probably a 5 out of 10 overall for the event. I had to order it on pay-per-view because being from Western Canada, we are not able to subscribe to the network unless, you know, using loopholes and workarounds. Um, so I had to pay the whole 50 bucks to watch the event. Um, kind of touch on Monday Night Raw a little bit, what happened afterwards. I thought that the whole studio thing was actually really, really well done. I thought that... That is actually something that they need to go to more. I think the whole 25-minute opening promo on Raw and just, you know, coming out and talking to a crowd, you know, it's just it's tired and there just needs to be a little bit of a different setting. I thought it was absolutely the best thing that could happen to Roman to have studio interviews because there's no crowd to really boo or cheer or make a difference in what he's saying or what he, you know, if he flubs a line or something like that. That part was actually really well done. And the end segment, it... it sounded to me was completely written by Paul Heyman because, uh, I mean, you could definitely see how it became believable that, yeah, you know, Roman and Brock, like this, it actually, you know, what it, it, we've got 60 days to build up to the main event of WrestleMania. They've got lots of time, and if you're going to get, you know, week by week of quality TV and building Roman up and you know, really making a believable character out of him that he might be the next guy, then we could be in for a really, really good main event and a passing of the torch. My only complaint would be that they need to get away from saying, oh, you know, the fans pay their money and they can cheer and boo whoever they want because that is something that sounds a lot like John Cena and that's something that I think you really want to get away with with Roman. I mean, you don't want... John Cena is John Cena, and he was what he was, and he is who he is. But, I mean, it's like you're never going to replicate a John Cena. You're never going to replicate a Hulk Hogan or a Stone Cold Steve Austin. They're once-in-a-generation wrestlers for a reason. And if Roman's going to be something different, then he's got to be something different. And I think that there's a better way to address the crowd reactions to him rather than... Um, just saying, yeah, you know, you can do what you want. You can boo and cheer who you want because that's not, that's not going to fly for a second time. In my opinion, you can push this guy to the moon. Um, but that angle is not going to work out. Um, what's my biggest concern coming out of all of this? I know that the Philly crowd loves their bad boys. And I know that, um, you know, the kind of heelish characters are, you know, they're always kind of popular with the smarter crowd, so the adults are going to cheer them a lot. But you have to be careful about the fact that Brock seems like he's getting a lot more cheers these days than booze. So Paulie Heyman there is going to have to really, you know, pull out all his best promo work and get the crowd to turn right against Brock and him again because the last thing you want if you want to make Roman your next guy is to be going up against, you know, basically you don't want him being the face going into mania or whatever events are going on. And basically the crowd completely turns on you and says, no, we want Brock instead. And then you can see that we're going to have another debacle. And I'm sure that they don't want that to, uh, to happen again. Um, you clearly saw how last year's Royal Rumble was a, debacle at the end and then they made some corrections and then wrestlemania 30 wound up being a very very good finish and a very good main event so i trust uh 
WWE in the sense that they're going to make sure that the show is the best it can be. And if, you know, the crowds aren't reacting the way that they need them to going into the event, you know, I'm sure Fastlane is going to be another, you know, determining factor, then um, they'll make the changes that they need to make. So that's it from me, guys. Um, I hope you enjoyed my thoughts. You feel free to uh, send me a tweet. Uh, put my Twitter link below. Uh, you can subscribe, like the video. Uh, I hope to get a lot more reviews and thoughts and everything out. I love, you know, pro wrestling and, you know, whether it's talking about behind the scenes, the actual product on TV, past products, um, characters that, you know, I've loved. Um, I love to chat about it, um, you know, so just feel free to hit me up, you know, leave comments below. Hit me up on Twitter. You can send me personal messages, emails, whatever it is. So I hope you guys uh, were able to sit through this. Or if you skipped ahead because you were looking for thoughts on a certain match or whatever, that's fine too. Whatever it is, I hope that you guys enjoyed it. Uh, thanks for listening in. Peace.